Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. So let's welcome uh, our next speaker. He's um, Bart Hagenmayer. He's the director at the Institute for Automation and Applied Informatics in Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And he's also professor of energy informatics. Um, he has um, experience in, in energy grids, uh, working in modeling and uncertainty. And today he, his talk will be about digital twins of large scale energy grids. So let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Bayhagen Meyer. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I hope so. Do you, <laughs> do you hear me? Yeah. Fine. We okay. can hear you. And then, then I will start. And it's not only me being here, but also Dr. Uwe Kühnhaft, which is a side of me. Perhaps you can show yourself. Yeah. Hi. So, because we will give the talk together first theory, then live demonstration and practice on digital twins large scale energy systems and for that I try to um, show my screen. Could you please tell me whether what you see, whether you see everything? Not yet. Now we can see it, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Can you see I try uh, does it show full screen already? Can you can you maximize it? Yeah I try. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh, welcome to my talk Thank you very much for the invitation, giving for the opportunity, giving here a talk on digital twins of large scale energy grids. Um, and it will be a little bit different from what the talk we saw beforehand, because you see for the for these large digital twins, you will need um, software in, in, a, in a different sense and in a different style. I already uh, put on the first slide, uh, yeah, represent line representations like this, yeah, or, uh, results of, of these kind of um, stability investigations on energy grids, which are large for large scale grids, which are only possible using uh, digital twin technology. So uh, for us, our digital twins are embedded in what we call the Energy Lab 2.0. And um, this is a lab located at uh, Cultural Institute of Technology on Campus North, integrating several aspects of energy the systems of the future. What you see here is um, with different colors, different energy vectors. Let's start with um, the blue, um, the blue vector. So all in blue here has deals with electricity, uh, being a photovoltaic power storage park, being at lithium uh, ion battery storages, flywheels, redox flow batteries. We even have a geothermal energy uh, plant, uh, power plant on site, uh, we have gas turbines, etc. And they are integrated with all what is called power to X, so power to gap, methanation, for instance, power to fuels, uh, power to hydrogen, uh, solid oxide fuel cells for the, for, for the, for the, the other uh, direction, so X to power, syngas from co-electrolysis or, or um, hydrogen from high temperature steam electrolysis. In red, uh, this the heat question. Yeah, we have a, a, a direct connection for high temperature thermal storage to uh, DLR Stuttgart, and all of these different energy vectors have to be combined um, by simulation and co-simulation, um, including, for instance, electromobility, including, uh, for instance, housing. So he heat uh, uh, and different grids, which we all combine together in what we call our smart energy system simulation and control center. And I will show you that part now, which deals with the large scale grids. Why did I start on the, on the small level? I did start on the small level um, because it all starts here. Here's the energy lab, yeah. Um, for building up these digital twins of, of large scale grids, you have to start with small details. Yeah? So you have to model various types, different complexity, and when dealing with electric grids on different voltage levels. Um, and for that part, I think Giovanni De Cane already spoke or will speak um, in, in the same uh, workshop uh, as I am present here with Dr. Pinat at the moment. So what are we able for, for digital twins to, to, to present? We have campus models. Campus north of KIT, DLR, and, and in Jülich for low, medium, and high voltage um, grids. We can uh, do power flow simulation on, the, on these digital twins, transient dynamics, and including power electronics. 
The next step is then regional models uh, or, or even national models. So for regional models, we are able to uh, represent in digital twins, uh, Karlsruhe and Baden-Württemberg, uh, it, it might be Oldenburg, Niedersachsen, or uh, it's Aachen, Cologne, not right Australia. Yeah? Together with partners from industry, which provide us the topology and from time to time, if, if they're very open, also grid data. Yeah? Again, low, medium, and high voltage interlinked um, with detailed residential areas, having the sector coupling to heating and cooling and gas um, for bringing all of these different aspects together. And when then coming to the national level, uh, their large scale grids, uh, uh, sync the electrical synchronous grids uh, of Germany, NCE region. NCE region is the Europe region you see here on the right. Including all of these new elements, um, which should support the energy transition we are all in, that is a high voltage DC lines, uh, phase shift transformers, uniform power flow controllers, thereby being able to um, implement and include in these digital twins primary and secondary controllers, the gas transport parallelly, and where we perhaps are aiming in the future, uh, a HVDC supercool of Europe. And it, you can only do a kind of feasibility study with whether these grids are feasible or not when using digital twin, uh, digital twin technology for these large grids. So for that, um, we need a simulation software framework here. Uh, I, I present you the in-house software framework developed by Dr. Kühnapp. Um, a typical model data flow starts with the modeling um, subcomponent in which uh, you put in and model power loads and generation for electrical grids, weather data, evidently since the future is very uh, renewables driven. So you need to include weather, uh, special events and um, all of that together then gives you a simulation input files, which you put to the um, simulation module where you use computing services as um, high performance computing or, or multi-core workstations. Uh, you get this from the solution from these uh, usage of the digital twins. You have to visualize it uh, in order to verify the results uh, which come out of the simulation. There are different aspects. It could be heat maps, it could be 3D visualizations, or, or, or time series, or web based. Because several aspects are possible. Then you have to evaluate the simulation results um, either visually or. By data, uh, by data inspection or, 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 or data mining techniques, for instance. So th this was the in-house uh, version, but if you want to be in contact with the um, with the grid operators and providers, uh, you need to speak their language for digital twins, which is a large list here on the left of the different software packages. Uh, which are out there in the, the digital twin world of uh, energy systems and future energy systems, starting with, with MATLAB, for instance, or Modelica, but then it goes over to um, in-house systems of ABB, now Hitachi, or Siemens, uh, or the very well-known Dixon and Power Factory package, which Dr. Kunap will use uh, in some seconds at the live demo. And, and there you see also graphically that these digital twins have different um, yeah, languages and grammars and representations which you need to understand and to bring bring into interaction as well on the national or on the European level. What can we do there for simulation and analysis using these digital twins? Uh, you can do powerful analysis in order to check the grid code, so that is whether the voltage bands are really respected, whether lines are not overloaded, whether the transformers are really cap cap capable of doing their job. Um, we can study electromechanical transients in order to verify whether stability is still even looking at machines and generators, um, including power electronics and new devices uh, within the grids uh, by modeling them first on, on, on the virtual side and then uh, deploying it thereafter in, in real life. And very um, important, all new aspects of grid operation and control, including um, the economy side, energy trading, and all that comes together. Um, in, in, in the different digital twins. 
So you have different types of simulation on different time scales, uh, which are here in the upper row where you see, oh, um, there are different aspects that, that which you can, which you have to deal with because the complexity otherwise would be too high to tackle all of these aspects at once. You know, um, a first insight for you, what could be such a, a usage of a digital twin in such a study? So we are part of the Copernicus uh, Ensure project, which is these one of these four national um, energy transition projects. Ensure is, is uh, the one dealing with electrical grids. Um, you see here the Tenet Zone D21. Tenet is the transmission system operator of, of the north. And uh, for those who are familiar with Germany, so this is the northern part of Germany where uh, you have uh, Holstein here and here on the North Sea and here on the Baltic Sea, uh, including um, the wind offshore wind power farms. And now the question is, and you have high high wind generation as well onshore as well offshore. Uh, and now the question is, um, is it possible to use the energy harvested by these wind farms, or do you have to to discard it? Otherwise, the grid would become unstable. So the answer is you have to model this region. You have to model the new HVDC gateway to the south of Germany and into south of Europe, and then further down south of Europe. So as Nordlink, Südlink, and, and the Baltic cable, which goes then uh, to Sweden. Uh, you have to include in your digital twin control good operations in order to, to enable the, the flexibility needs which you have to, to, to use for good stability. Um, and you have to take into account that uh, this is this wind area, uh, it's a wide area of energy, uh, even connected to Great Britain, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Germany. And uh, what is also important to take into account in um, the industrial areas in, in Germany, uh, because they are a large sink of, 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 of energy, which you have to, to consider. And the research topics with this, these digital twins you can then address are um, uh, the development and the operational control of, of facts. Facts are flexible AC transmission systems. So these are new power electronics based control devices uh, for the grid. Um, you have to newly study power flow control using, for instance, battery electric uh, storage systems or unified power flow controllers or phase shift transformer or solid state transformers. You can then uh, study techno-economical studies for power to X, X to power that the X stands now for gas uh, um, or, or to liquids, for instance, or to hydrogen or methane, and then sector coupling with respect to gas and heat for, and heat for, for co simulation. And um, another uh, aspect we study are, uh, for instance, a multi-level uh, uh, study combining transmission system operators with models of uh, distribution system operators. They don't have common models normally. And here you see Baden-Württemberg, so now not in the north of Germany, but in the south of Germany. Uh, and we are bringing together um, the transmission grids of Transnet, BW, and Ampen in that region with uh, the the distribution system and operator from, um, from Baden-Württemberg, which is called Netzit BW, but also the local ones of, uh, for instance, Mannheim uh, MVV. Uh, they have the four voltage levels um, defined by N2A, one to four, including the transformers. Uh, that, that is, goes down to the uh, medium voltage um, level that is 10 to 20 to 30 kilovolts. Included in that large chicken are all stations with detailed buses, switches, transformers, uh, and generators. The major power stations are uh, uh, included accumulated photovoltaics, major wind parks, and we use the load weather time series of 2019 in order to understand the grid status of um, 2021 in a dynamic sense. Yeah? And the representation could be either geographically or in line diagrams, but for that, we use software. Um, then are able to do these simulations in real time. For instance, you see here um, our control room of the Energy Lab 2.0, in which we have digital twin of our real campus on Campus North. 
uh, we feed in um, the measured grid data of this campus because we have deployed uh, several uh, phasor measurement units into um, FPGA real time digital simulated comprising the digital twin of, of, of the campus. Um, and then are able uh, to simulate these, this model uh, in a, yeah, as I said, in a real time uh, fashion in interlinkage with uh, the software suit you saw some, some slides uh, before, such that we can do a dynamic stability assessment and a co simulation for heat and gas in real time. And the um, newest thing is that we can combine this real time simulator of our campus with the so-called Villas node, um, which is um, a real-time interlinkage or interface um, to other components. You can use that in-house, but we can also use it to link uh, this model to um, a, German, uh, a German model together with our partners. This is on the next slide. To, together with our partners uh, in the Ensure, um, a project with Aachen uh, and Erlangen Nürnberg. So we set up a real time digital twin and combine it over internet together with, um, with partners uh, where in this configuration, Erlangen is the primary simulator and we are the secondary simulator. Um, and the Villas node of Aachen is used for, for the coupling. Yeah? And what can we do there? Uh, we can use, um, we can couple different digital twins, different digital power systems. Uh, here, for instance, the transmission system of the Nordic test system, in which you have one spot, it's a controlled current source. Yeah? This is all done in Erlangen and Nürnberg. Uh, and now we couple to our real-time simulation of the campus I just showed you, uh, and couple here as a controlled voltage source and transmit over the internet, over the internet, uh, the respective um, physical quantities to combine all that such that in real time, our campus uh, in Karlsruhe is as if would, it would be in the Nordic test system, a subgrid um, and the interaction of these different grids in real time. Is that. So what can you do with that? Yeah, now you can study short circuits as well in the distribution system, that would be now uh, the virtual campus, campus norm, or in the transmission system. So um, in both cases, you, we can look at what, what happens um, in the distribution system. And here you see, if we short circuit in the distribution system, then um, the short circuit uh, is clear uh, after some, some short time. Yeah? Uh, however, in the transmission system, um, things get more uh, uh, uncomfortable, uh, as, you, as you can see here. Uh, so it makes well, a, a big difference whether you, where you have short circuits and, and, how, and how you clear them, also for the operation of the energy grids of the future, based on the insights of digital twins of uh, large grids. So conclusions, the real-time simulation, the couple of works and, and is stable even for high dynamics close to the co-simulation connection. And um, the latency of the, the communication has impact um, uh, evidently uh, and is, it is quite well represented. So this was the, the demo part. Uh, no, this was the um, theoretical part. The demo part comes now uh, for Mr. Kuhner. So I free now, uh, I stop my, um, my presentation and Mr. Kühnapfel will take over. So first of all, I stop. Mr. Kühnapfel, are you ready? <clears throat> yes, I'm trying to. Bildschirm freigeben. Connect the screen. Uh, okay. We'll see you in a second. That takes some time always. Okay. Now you have to, to tile. Ah, okay. I have to press another button. So what? Ah, that's that's a new situation because now I just look to my left and I can see all the slides 
screen uh, of what I'm transmitting to you. Uh, so first of all, good afternoon from my side. I'm heading uh, here at, at KIT, I, IAI, uh, the de Department for Energy System Integration, and we specialize mostly on electricity grids uh, at the moment. Um, and what I like to show you uh, this afternoon, it's a more detailed study of the Baden-Württemberg grid. We just saw in previous presentation, the grid uh, in Northern Germany, in Schleswig-Holstein, and uh, Veit mentioned the Südlink, it's two uh, HVDC connections between uh, Northern Germany and Southern Germany. And uh, what we see here on the left side uh, in this list is various uh, various states of, of, of our grid here in Baden-Württemberg. That means uh, here in, in this view, we have the today view. Uh, in the model, we have uh, the, the uh, transport grid from the uh, transnet Baden-Württemberg. That's the equivalent to Tenet, to Tenet uh, but here in Baden-Württemberg, uh, also 100% uh, sub company of energy, Baden Württemberg, ENBW. And uh, here in, in this model, uh, we have the transport grid and uh, here, uh, switch to various use. Uh, it's covered in, in three different uh, sub models the uh, 110 kilovolt grid. And what we can do here, if I just zoom here uh, in, uh, at the moment located here, Leopoldshafen, and there you see, uh, zoom in the map, Karlsruhe Institute for Technology. In fact, it's the Campus Nord, and uh, all, all the, the grid data here are uh, modeled what we call line sharp and uh, bus sharp. That means every uh, overhead line or every cable uh, is included in the model or if you look at our major look, uh, major stations here in the area I zoom in here you see the various buses and how the different uh, components like transformers or generators are connected to that model so what are we using this model for? In the first place, we simply do a, a so-called power flow that we look, if, if we have a current situation, the situation is according to the weather data of 2029, but with the grid of uh, today, two years later, and I perform now a load flow. Load flow means it's calculating on every line, on every component, uh, the current uh, situation. That means the voltage, uh, the voltage, the load of various lines. You see on the right side, it pops up now uh, the voltage loads at the various buses. Uh, here in the display, by example, here on that one, uh, well, let's go to our, our own one. Uh, here, about 800 meters uh, distant from here, we now have on our local station uh, on one bus bar 112.9 kilovolts. And uh, because they are now switched together in parallel, uh, the other one the same. And here is the load, the current load at our campus grid in, at uh, KIT Campus North. What we see here on the left one, that's the situation of uh, generators, it's the so-called uh, load generation diagram and the larger uh, orange circles denote the, uh, the generation. Uh, geographically here in Baden-Württemberg, I have to say we have a lot of running water here along the river line, just south of the Black Forest. And we are, uh, connected to Vorarlberg, Vorarlberg in Austria, which is in fact, in fact a part of the control region of Transnet BW. Uh, 
that means uh, uh, here the pump storage uh, generation is used to flatten uh, the load diagram. So, and what I pre-calculated before uh, is here a few diagrams. Typically, we look in on, on push that to the right, so you can see better. We look at certain periods. In that example, it's about uh, one week in spring at that day. In spring, uh, uh, the weather data of 2029. In fact, it's the Easter week. The Easter week, you can see on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, and Karl Freitag, as we say, don't know the English word. For that Car Freitag, Saturday, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, we have low load, low load in that diagram. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, we had uh, at that weather year a very high generation of solar power, almost 100%. It was a clear day, no clouds. And uh, so we don't need a lot of other uh, conventional uh, power. Uh, I should mention, I should mention, we still have today the situation that we have a nuclear power plant running, Neckar Westheim, Neckar Westheim 2, until the end of this year, uh, Grundremmingen, uh, Block B of Grundremmingen. So those, those provide together around uh, two and a half gigawatts, 2,500 megawatts, both of them. And uh, so together with the renewable energy, we got a, a good supply at the moment uh, uh, of energy, of, of electricity here in Baden-Württemberg. And our goal was uh, in our study, okay, uh, to check how would the situation be, uh, to activate now the next one. So it takes a second. So uh, switching on this one off, uh, off, and we have the same situation, but looking uh, five years ahead. In five years, we will have, as already mentioned by Freud, uh, here the HVDC direct current uh, lines connecting Baden-Württemberg. Uh, to either the North Sea here up there and via Bavaria uh, to, to the Baltic Sea. And uh, using the end, uh, the two nuclear power stations are gone. They are not really gone, but they are switched off, don't produce anymore. And if you look in the diagram, circuit diagram, Neckar Westheim, it's switched off doesn't produce anything. I do a load flow. Okay. Load flow. So it's inactive. Active. Instead of that, we have here in Großgaltach the Südlink. Südlink here provides for that situation that day uh, 1,600 uh, megawatts. And uh, the second, the Ultranet, uh, it's uh, connected here to uh, Philipsburg, also a site with a station of, 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 of uh, now switched off nuclear power plant, but the infrastructure of, of course is still used. Uh, there we connect the Ultranet. The Ultranet is coming from Osterrad, Osterrad close to Düsseldorf. And now, if we look at the uh, generation load diagram, now we see uh, before we had the large orange circle here, here in Neckar Westheim, uh, no input from Neckar Westheim, but now uh, on, on the two HVDC lines from uh, going to Philipsburg and Groß Gartach. And so, what we do now is uh, Pre-calculated that RDK8, the same weather situation. Uh, of course, now uh, we have one week selected in November. 
so-called dunkel flaute area. That means we have very low generation of solar power. Here the orange lines and very low wind here in Baden-Württemberg. So a lot of the power is coming in from northern Germany. Here these lines, the upper one and the second one also in, in, in blue and red. That's the uh, the load on these two uh, HPDC links, uh, providing together uh, uh, up to uh, two uh, two times two gigawatts, so uh, up to four or four gigawatts. That means about the size of uh, four nuclear power plants, and uh, of course it has to be balanced according to the local generating. Uh, generation of renewables. Uh, the, the load curves are the same on these. And now we look Kraftwerk, so that's all the power stations uh, here in the area. And uh, so we look here at the various generation of, uh, of primary energy. So uh, here it's bioenergy, then we have running water, and storage water. Uh, is here this uh, green, greenish blue <coughs> uh, uh, band that's uh, coming from the HVD ceilings, uh, the transfer from northern Germany and uh, on, on the previous time uh, from 2021, I showed you uh, shortly uh, with the diagram. Uh, regarding the conventional production. Uh, and now we look here that the, what we see here is that the generation of hard coal, hard coal is largely reduced uh, for some areas of some, sometimes for some dates, even going to zero and show you here the energy. So we see here, uh, uh, Conventional, conventional renewable, uh, and uh, this uh, the imported one from northern Germany. So that's one of the studies we perform. Uh, we look at the energy and uh, longer periods. If I now switch, activate a third scenario. A scenario. RMS, no, that's green one. I want to do it. RMS activate. That's the last demo I did. Uh, still the same situation, but now before I, I looked at periods of, of uh, about a week or a day or an hour, now we get a little bit faster. That means look at periods in the area of one, two seconds. And uh, here I have a diagram, real time simulation. Uh, like we have a short circuit, short circuit here in Groß Gartach. Groß Gartach, that's the feeding point of one of the two. That's the, the diagram of Groß Gartach, and the converter is connected here from the Südlink. And I perform now a simulation. This we can test. So initializing the whole situation. Okay. Uh, then I start it. Start it. So here it's, I set a breakpoint at this point. Uh, switch back to thing here. On that bus bar, I've set a, a short circuit. A short circuit, I continue. And start. So it's continuing now. And uh, what we see here very nicely on that upper diagram that is uh, here we got the sh uh, short circuit. Uh, by definition, it has uh, the converter has to withstand a, a short circuit for 125 milliseconds. So, what would happen now if we don't uh, have any measures? What would happen would that be 
converter would pump in two gigawatts uh, on a short circuit, that is what means a uh, sudden overheating, sudden overheating of, of all the infrastructure locally, it would burn, destroy uh, everything. So what we do here, uh, there is an injection of injection of uh, active power. In fact, uh, the uh, current is uh, injected with a 90 degree uh, uh, ratio to the voltage. That means we have no active power, but only a reactive power. That means there's no heating. And uh, the controller, control controller, so that's the overall control structure, uh, the inner control structure. Uh, see, so that 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 uh, circuit here is doing exactly the uh, injection of uh, current. Uh, electrical engineers call this situation uh, a fault right through. So we have a fault at one. Uh, at one point, and the converter has to do a ride through, uh, which is very nicely showed here. And uh, the modeled, uh, the modeled system uh, is doing what I want. That's good thing. And here we got the uh, the current and and the voltage on the DC lines. So, and the last, that's the last one I like to show. So it's covering uh, these simulations, everything from uh, small microgrids up, up to the European grids, uh, all the state of the art uh, equipment, what's available and we perform uh, simulations uh, from a time frame from uh, one day to several weeks or up, up down uh, below. Uh, the second level for electromechanical simulations. If you see, time scale goes uh, between zero and uh, two seconds, and we perform here uh, one iteration step every millisecond. Uh, when we can do that uh, in real time, even with special hardware, and uh, Fred just showed you as the, the last two of, of, of his slides. Uh, our setup and between the sites we transfer data with two kilohertz. So 2,000 frames are uh, sent between the uh, various sites to synchronize both sites. And uh, so what you see here, that state of the art of electrical simulation uh, as one form of the digital twins. So I'm at the end, thank you very much. And if you got any questions to both of us, uh, please don't hesitate, just ask. Yeah. Thank you very much for your, for your talk. If there are any questions for Dr. Hagemeyer and Dr. Uwe, please welcome to ask. Uh, so, so the idea was to show digital twins in different scales. Um, for, for electrical grids that you need in-house software or even um, um, yeah, software, which is professional software, and that you need a lot of competition in order to model and to use it yeah, from tiny scale to large scale. So this was the idea. Okay. Hopefully we could convey a little bit. Oh, I see Michael. Hello, Michael. Yeah. Hi. Hello, Pai. First of all, Thank you very much for being here and also uh, to your colleague, Mr. Kuhnapfel, for presenting this, this very insightful uh, depiction of how you do multi-scale analysis and multi-scale simulation of these uh, energy grids. And I, I really have to say, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm very much impressed of what is happening, especially if, if you show uh, uh, already real-time real time analysis and simulation capabilities. And I, I actually have two questions. The first one is from a, from a stupid physicist to actually now saw all these grid definitions and everything. Uh, and, and my very first question is, how do you know that you didn't make a 
make a mistake in your description somewhere. So, I mean, this looked this looked absolutely awfully complicated. It is absolutely <laughs> awfully complicated. I'm 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 pretty sure you are very thorough and have no problems in in checking the validity. But uh, I, I would be very worried. There's something. A, a very small error. How do you ensure this? Are there tools? Is there is there a, a language that describes this? How how do you make this? How do you do this? That's a very good question. So first of all, if I may put it this way, uh, there is no simulation entity in Europe uh, which is more valid or less valid than, than than we are, because for such large complex systems, the only Possible validity you have is for in taking taking into account um, the data published by uh, let's take the EEX that is the the um, stock market uh, in, in in Leipzig where you can where you get the data for the active power yeah because this is simply money flowing also from their point of view uh, then we have um, local friends um, at the, the transmission and distribution system operators, which provide us data so that we can check whether the models are valid in that region. And then you go down to, uh, for instance, here on the campus, and the campus we have everything in our hand and we can measure everything. So, so it, it's a top down and a bottom up um, structure in order to, uh, let's say, by 99.9% .9 to ensure that validity is given. Um, there's no other way. Uh, and there will always be a small gap which you fill with best knowledge. Yeah? Um, but I think Mr. Dr. Kuhnapel did an enormous job uh, to do exactly this. And, and, and it's, it's a team approach. You cannot do that on your own. You cannot do that uh, by one person. It's impossible. I, I, I can imagine. Uh, uh, come now, now seeing all the all the live capabilities. I mean, the the I, I I heard 125 milliseconds. So that's a that's actually a very short time scale, looking at days and everything. So there's a there's a huge scale in in times and also in in dynamics. And I was I was wondering. So we hear now a lot, and and due to the due to due to the new government in 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 Germany, I think. We will see uh, much more sources of energy coming up that will be highly dynamic, maybe on a on an hour scale or something. No, 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 no. even on a sub-second scale. This is this will be one of the problems we okay. have. Okay. Uh, the pro we will have the problem that um, that inertia is, is is taken out of the system. Yeah, okay. uh, and you put in a lot of a lot of um, renewables which have no inertia. Perhaps we can use the power electronics to provide some kind of inertia. Yeah. Uh, but it will never be the, the same inertia here, physicists, as, as from a turning electromechanically coupled uh, generator turbo set. Yeah? Um, and up to now, no, no one really knows what happens. Um, and, and it's, an, at least from my perspective, it's, it's an ongoing experiment with the actual grid. So um, there are several questions which are not solved at all. But for solving them, you need that complexity on the, on the <laughs> space scale and on the time scale. Uh, which we showed at, at the moment. Yeah. One example is, I mean, we have in the actual government that on every rooftop there should be photovoltaics. I can tell you directly here, it is not feasible with the actual topology. You would not get the power out of the street. Yeah? The, 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 the lines within yeah, the streets are, will be overloaded if you try to do that. Yeah? So um, there's a lot of questions in front of us and we from, um, yeah, our Helmholtz task is to provide solutions for that, and on the basis of the digital twins, we, uh, we, Mr. Kuhnap, and um, in a certain part myself, are, are are there for doing the job. I'm, 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 this is this is a huge task, and if you have to include all the all the private energy prosumers and maybe even cars, we don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, they are driving around; they don't have a fixed place. This. But they have connection points. 
they don't they, they don't charge uh, by by radio waves or they charge yeah, yeah. cables <laughs> Uh, not yet. <laughs> um, very, very improbable that they will do so. So I don't yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, huge task. In this part, one has perhaps to model uh, with stochastic models or so, and um, and and you start that on, on the on, on the local level. Yeah, you will not do that on on the big level, and then you have to put the puzzle together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Impressive. Thank you a lot. Thanks, Mr. Kuna, for also thank you for the audience. Oh, thank you. In, in the same order, I wanted to ask, because it was not clear for me, how do you consider uncertainty in, in your modeling? Because there are several sources of uncertainty. How do you, how do you manage that? Do you take the information directly from the data? Or? What sort of uh, uncertainties do you? I don't know, demand, demand or uncertainty or? uncertainty in the generation so we we use uh, first of all the grid is modeled according to the uh, data available uh, mm -hmm. from 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 uh, the energy providers or energy companies so we have close cooperation uh, in fact with all of them uh, through NSOE uh, that's the the head organization of the uh, electricity companies within Europe. So we have very detailed models. Secondly, uh, you know, by example, the transparency data. Transparency data means all the energy companies must publish uh, their generation load uh, situation. Uh, usually you get these data with one day delay on, on their respective uh, uh, websites, uh, those data we use, if, if that's not sufficient, we mm -hmm. simply ask them and we get better data. If okay. you look at the medium voltage grids here at our site, uh, at Campus Nord, we are the owners as KIT, that means we get direct access to these data. Uh, we cannot everything publish uh, what we would like to uh, using either open or free access because uh, uh, the electricity system is part of the so-called critical in infrastructure here mm -hmm. in Germany and all over Europe. That means uh, some of the information is restricted. We have the information, but we, we are not allowed to publish every detail. So and, and I keep it critical clear. means uh, if there are some some hackers or whatever, so they mm -hmm. uh, use the information they get through us uh, to make their infiltration easier. They know then the names of the stations. They know uh, they would know what to look for. Mm -hmm. uh, not publishing it, we hide the information what to look for. Then it's just a black large box. system, uh, a large black box. And another aspect of uncertainty is what stems from the renewables production, that is from yeah. photovoltaics and, and wind production. And there we have a group uh, which deals with artificial intelligence, machine learning, with um, forecasting of uh, based on weather data and, and of mm. weather forecasts. So um, for that, we use non-parametric um, models. Uh, we use um, and not only point estimations, but really taking taking the um, stochastic structure that is that is skewness, etc. Uh, so the higher moments with us, mm -hmm. but including them thereafter in our models. So this is another way how we deal with uncertainty. Yeah, this is very interesting. So you are guaranteeing reliability then with this? Yes, in a certain sense, yes. Mm -hmm. To a certain degree, I would say. Um, of course, we use weather data. Uh, mm -hmm. and there we have a catalog of the last 30 years. And so one interesting question uh, would be for us, how long does uh, uh, a specific situation last? So, and what we call Dunkelflaute, that means no wind, no, almost uh, no, no solar. So it's very low. Uh, production and typically here in Germany, uh, this uh, situation lasts uh, about four to six days. Uh, 
uh, at most than the, the winds uh, or, or solar situation is changing. So the recommendation for the grid, uh, uh, grid development would be to uh, provide storage capacities for at least twice that time. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, of course, pump, water pump station could not be uh, uh, rebuilt easily, uh, but we still have a lot of around 10 gigawatts here in Germany, mm -hmm. of pumped, pumped storage. And so uh, battery to, to provide a, almost 80 uh, gigawatt uh, for 24 hours for eight days, that would be too expensive. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you a number that 525 billion euros. Uh, to yeah. put, uh, if, we, if we have uh, current prices of, of uh, battery storage, so we will have a, a mixture of both. Either yeah. battery storage, hydrogen. Hydrogen has this disadvantage of a low efficiency rate. So if you re, uh, regenerate the, the hydrogen power, so uh, that means it's balancing uh, all that. Uh, the electricity market is the highest regulated market and standardized market uh, in the world. So, you know, the IEEE I organization, I'm myself a member of IEEE, like most of the electric, electrical engineers. And that was started by Edison and Co. in the 1880s. Uh, so it's the, the highest, the highest international or longest lasting uh, international organization. organization. Ex existing in the world, and it's also very international. And mm -hmm. as you know, we got the European connected uh, electricity grid. Uh, also, we got exchange of power to the former Gus states, so that means uh, ex Soviet Union. And so it's very, very international. And even through all, through all the elect all the political conflicts, the electricity system is still running. So it's yeah. out of politics. Definitely. Fortunately. <laughs> so that's, yeah, it's very interesting. And I hope you can scale it in the future. It's very interesting yeah. to look at. Yeah. Um, I think we are out of time already. Um, no, you're not. You still have five minutes if you would okay. like to. OK, so if there are any more questions, yeah, Roland. Please. You can, your microphone is, is, um, is off, exactly. Toha uh, Hagmeyer, following question, very simple. Uh, do you think it's possible to run a stable electrical grid uh, based on solar power and uh, wind power only? Oh dear, <laughs> I like these simple questions. Um, if you ask me, I'm not sure about it. Um, if we have a lot of the plus energy, that is a lot of um, offshore and onshore wind with the right storage technologies, which also have their, their cost, we have to admit that directly. Um, and if we then could enable power electronics such that it can provide inertia or we have to let Rotating machines turn so phase shift, uh, yeah, phase shifters uh, um, that is turning uh, rotating equipment just providing inertia. I think it is possible, but we cannot be sure about it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, how to solve the problem then? Then one would have to use gas turbines based on biogas or on hydrogen, hydro, green gas, gas, uh, green green gas yeah. Oh, which, which then has this 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 inertia and, and also the capability to be fast in because gas turbines are nothing else than aeroderivatives that is um, jet uh, jet drives yeah nailed on earth um, so they, they can be very fast uh, I think there will be solutions but it's a, a huge transformation of the whole energy system and whether it will be fully possible I mean as a scientist I, I can only say 
I don't know. But we got a good basis of, uh, of, of uh, conventional uh, power plants, uh, at least here in baden württemberg with our pumped storage. Uh, that's all together up to three and a half gigawatts, if we include the Black Forest and the four Alberg, Silretta, uh, Stausee, they, are, uh, they, they can be uh, can perform a black start. So even if there would be what never happened, a blackout, uh, they could easily start. Uh, so so it's uh, it's not only solar, uh, not only wind. So it's a combination of all of that, which gives some which gives some uh, safety. And also, of course, we are only a distance of about ten, 10 kilometers to France and. Uh, Monsieur Macron still likes to have the nuclear power station, so there is a, some sort of backup. Is that a good answer, Sarah Brehm? <laughs> <laughs> so probably we need more time for this right now. There are too much uncertainty in the system. Yeah, so we have to be technology open. Yeah? And yeah. what is also clear from a geopolitical standpoint is the more renewables we can get into the system, the less dependent we are on, on, on other energy sources, uh, not to name now some of them. So um, I think the path is the right one, but one has, has to be sure about e each and every step. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Michael Guzman, have another question? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So we already talked about scenarios in the future and how you can how you can basically simulate them the the other very interesting thing is of course um is is feedback to the systems you already have in place so can you can you live, elaborate a bit more on on if you do a, a forward analysis of your system and basically estimate what's happening next how What's, what's the current time scale in which you can uh, uh, basically uh, uh, give feedback to the system and do something? And how does this have to change in the future? So how do you, how do you basically uh, give feedback to the power plants and wherever and, and the net and, and so on? We do our studies up to... Uh, at the moment till 2045 that means uh, that's the goal here in germany for the net zero uh, so uh, co2 balanced situations and so and we work on scenarios scenarios uh, up to 2045 that means a full let's call it full green energy system and of course, our work, by example, in Copernicus and Shure and the other Copernicus projects lead to recommendations to the poli uh, to, to politics and regulation. That means how to change the market regulations uh, and uh, recommendations, which part of the energy system have to be uh, increased, uh, enhanced, rebuilt. So, and what you, the, the result of that, you can read then every year in the so-called so network development plan here in Germany. Currently we are at the, at the date 2035, uh, 20, uh, NEP 2035. That means there are defined the actual measures, uh, the construction work to be going on till uh, 35. But of course we also look at uh, then the, the gap of next uh, 10 years later. So there are yearly recommendations how many wind turbines have to be rebuilt, how many uh, <clears throat> PV systems have to be installed. And so all the, the taxation measures of, of, uh, of our government uh, support that. Yes? Also the regulations. and. Uh, at the moment, there is common understanding that the planning has to be passed. Uh, the planning and the building process. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for, for your talk, the wonderful talk. And I hope um, in the future we can hear more about you and your project. It can be a scale.
Well, thank you very much. I think now we have a break, right? Um, thank you very much uh, to all of you, to the talk, to the question, also to Anna for introducing. And we are having now a short break, about uh, five minutes. So we start at 35 with the introduction of Marino Serial. See you then in a bit. <laughs>